from Cambridge, Massachusetts, it's The Cube, covering MIT Chief Data Officer and Information Quality Symposium 2019, brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media. Welcome back to Cambridge, Massachusetts, everybody. You're watching The Cube, the leader in tech coverage. My name is Dave Vellante, I'm here with my co-host, Paul Gillen. This is day one of our two-day coverage of the MIT CDO IQ conferences. CDO, Chief Data Officer, IQ, Information Quality. Colin Mahoney is here, he's a good friend and longtime Cube alum. I haven't seen you in a while, but thank you so much for taking some time. You're thank like a you. special guest. Yeah, really. it's great to be here. Yeah, so. Thank you. So this is not you know, something that you would normally attend. I, I, I caught up with you, invited you in. This conference is started as like back office governance, information yep. quality, kind of you know, wonky stuff, hidden. And then when the big data, uh, meme took off, kind of around the time we met. Yep. The chief data, data officer role emerged. Yep. Uh, the whole Hadoop thing exploded, and then this conference kind of got bigger and bigger and bigger. Still intimate, but very high level, very, very senior. And it's kind of come full circle, as we've been saying, you know, information quality still matters. You have been in this data business forever, so I, w I wanted to invite you in just to get your perspectives. We'll talk about what's new with, with what's going on in, in your company, but let's go back a little bit. You know, when, when we first met and, and even before, you saw it coming, you kind of invested your whole career into data. Yep. So, take us back 10 years. I mean, it was so different. Remember, it was Batch, it was Hadoop, but it was cool. There was a lot of cool still projects cool. going on. <laughs> and, it's, and it's still cool. Yeah. But, um, take a look back. Yeah, so I mean, it's changed a lot. Look, I, I got into it a while ago. I've always loved data. I had no idea the explosion and the three V's of data that we've seen over the last decade, but um, data is really important and it's just going to get more and more important. But as I look back, I think what's really changed, and even if you just go back a decade, I mean, there is an insatiable appetite for data and that is not slowing down. It hasn't slowed down at all. And I think everybody wants that perfect solution that they can ask any question and get immediate answers to. Um, we went through the Hadoop boom. I'd argue that we're going through the Hadoop bust. Um, but what people actually want is still the same. You know, they want real answers, accurate answers. They want them quickly and they want it against all their information, all their data. And I think that Hadoop evolved a lot as well. You know, it started as one thing 10 years ago with MapReduce, and I think in the end, what it's really been about is disrupting the storage market. But if you really look at what's disrupting storage right now, public clouds, S3, right? That's the new data lake. Um, so there's always a lot of hype cycles. Everybody talks about, you know, now it's cloud, everything. Um, for maybe the last 10 years, it was a lot of Hadoop. But at the end of the day, I think what people want to do with data is still very much the same. And, um, and a lot of companies are still struggling with it. Hence the role for chief data officers to really figure out how do I monetize data on the one hand and how do I protect that asset on the other hand. Well, so, and the cool thing is, so this conference is not a tech conference, really. And we love tech. I mean, we like talking about this. This is why I love having you on. We kind of have a little Vertica thread that I've created here. So Colin essentially is the current CEO of Vertica. I know that's not your title, but you're GM and senior vice president, but you're running Vertica. So Michael Stonebreaker's coming on tomorrow. Yeah, Chris, excellent. Chris Lynch is oh, coming great, on tomorrow. Yeah. We got Andy Palmer awesome. coming on yeah. tomorrow. <laughs> so we have this connection. <laughs> Why is that important? It's because, you know, Vertica is a very cool company and it was all about data and it was all about disrupting sort of the traditional relational database, kind of doing more w with data. And yep. if you go back to the, to the roots of Vertica, it was like, how do you do things faster? How do you really take advantage of, of, of data to really drive new business? Yep. And that's kind of what, what it's all about. And the tech behind it is really cool. We did your conference for many, many years. It's coming back, by the way. Is it? Mar yeah, this March, so March 30th. Oh wow, mark that In down. In Boston yeah. at the new well, Encore Hotel. You better Hotel. have a cube there, Yeah, bro. That's great. So, and uh, yeah, you've done that conference with yeah. me before. Mm -hmm. So very cool customers, kind of yep. leading edge. Yep. Um, so I want to get I want to get to some of that, but but let's let's talk the disruption for a minute. So you guys started with the whole you know architecture, MPP, and so forth, and you talked about cloud. Cloud really disrupted Hadoop. What are some of the other technology disruptions that you're seeing in the market space? I think, I mean, you know, it's hard not to talk about AI and machine learning and you know, what one means versus the other, who knows, right? But I think one thing that is definitely happening is people are leveraging the volumes of data and they're trying to use all the processing power and storage power that we have 
to do things that humans either are too expensive to do or simply can't do at the same speed and scale. And so I think we're going through a renaissance where a lot more is being automated, certainly on the Vertica roadmap and our path has always been initially you get the data in and then we want the platform to do a lot more for our customers, lots more analytics, lots more machine learning in the platform. Um, so that's definitely been a lot of the buzz around, but what's really funny is when you talk to a lot of customers, they're still struggling with just some basic stuff. Like forget about the predictive thing. First, you gotta get to what happened in the past. Like let's give accurate reporting on what's actually happening. The other big thing I think is a disruption is, I think IoT, for all the hype that it's getting, it's very real. Mm -hmm. Every device is kicking off lots of information. The feedback loop of A-B testing or quality testing for predictive maintenance, it's happening almost instantly. And so you're getting massive amounts of new data coming in. It's all this machine sensor type data. You got to figure out what it means really quick and then you actually have to do something and act on it within seconds. And that's a whole new area for so many people. Uh, that's not the traditional enterprise data warehouse. And you know, back to your comment on Stonebreaker, um, he got a lot of this right from the beginning. You know, and and um, I think he looked at the architectures, he took a lot of the best in class designs. We didn't necessarily invent everything, but we put a lot of that together. And then I think the other thing you got to do is constantly reinvent your platform. You know, we came out with our Eon mode to run cloud native. Uh, we just got rated the top cloud data warehouse um, from a net promoter score rating perspective. So, you know, but we got to keep going. You know, we got to keep reinventing ourselves, but leverage everything that we've done in the past as well. So one of the things you said, which is kind of relevant for here, Paul, is you're still seeing a, a real data quality issue that customers are, are wrestling with. And that's a big theme here, isn't it? Absolutely, uh, and the, uh, I, I mean, it's, what sort of goes around comes around. As Dave said earlier, that we're still talking about information quality 13 years after this conference began. Have the have the tools to improve quality improved all that much? I think the tools have improved. I think that's another area where machine learning, you know, if you look at Tamer, and I know you're going to have Andy here tomorrow, right. they're leveraging a lot of the augmented things you can do with the processing to make it better. But I think one thing that makes the problem worse now is it's gotten really easy to pour data in. It's gotten really easy to store yeah. data mm -hmm. without having to have the right structure, the right quality. It, you know, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, everything was perfect before it got into the platform, right. right? Everything was, there was quality, everything was there. What's been happening over the last decade is you're pumping data into these systems. Nobody knows if it's redundant data, nobody knows if the quality is any good, and the, the amount of data is massive. It's so cheap to store, so very cheap pumping to store. it in. But I think that creates a lot of issues when it comes to data quality. So I do think the technology yeah. has gotten better. I think there's a lot of companies that are doing a great job with it. Um, but I think the challenge has definitely upped. So, you, go ahead. I'm please. sorry, you, you mentioned earlier that, that we're seeing the death of Hadoop. I'd like you to elaborate on that. <laughs> because Hadoop actually came up this morning in the keynote. It's part of what yeah. GlaxoSmithKline did. Uh, came up in a conversation I had with the CEO of Experian last week. I mean, there, it's still out there. Why do you think it's in decline? I think, um, I mean, first of all, if you look at the Hadoop vendors that are out there, they've all been struggling. I mean, some of them are shutting down, you know, two of them have merged and they've gotten killed lately. Um, I think there are some very successful implementations of Hadoop. I think Hadoop as a storage environment is wonderful. I think you can process a lot of data on Hadoop. But the problem with Hadoop is it became the panacea that was going to solve all things data. It was going to be the database, it was going to be the data warehouse, it was going to do everything. That's usually the kiss of death, isn't it? It's the kiss of death. And and it, it you know, the killer app on Hadoop ironically became SQL. Yeah. I mean SQL is the killer right. app on Hadoop. <laughs> if you want a SQL engine, you don't need Hadoop. But you know what we did was um, you know in the beginning Mike uh, sort of made fun of it Stonebreaker and you know joked a lot about yeah, he's heard of MapReduce it's called Group By <laughs> and that created a lot of tension between the early Vertica and Hadoop I think in the end we embraced it um, we sit next to Hadoop we sit on top of Hadoop we sit behind it we sit in front of it it's there but I think what the reality check of the industry has been certainly by the business folks in these companies is. It has not fulfilled all the promises. It has not fulfilled a fraction of the promises that they bet on, and so they need to figure those things out. So I don't think it's going to go away completely, but I think its best success has been disrupting the storage market, and I think there's some much larger disruptions of technologies that frankly are better than HDFS to do that. Mm -hmm. and, and the cloud 
it was a game changer. And a lot of them are in the cloud. Which is ironic, because you know, cloud era. You know, <laughs> yeah. and they, they, they didn't really have a cloud strategy, neither did Hortonworks, neither did MapR, and you know, ha just so happened Amazon had one, Google had one, <laughs> Microsoft has one, so it's just convenient well, to... How is that affecting your business? I mean, we're seeing this massive migration to the cloud. It's actually data. been great for us. So one of the things about Vertica is we, we run everywhere, and we made a decision a while ago. We had our own data warehouse as a service offering, it might have been ahead of its time, never really took off. Mm -hmm. What we did instead is we pivoted and we said, you know what, we're going to invest in that experience. So it's a SaaS-like experience, but we're going to let our customers have full control over the cloud. And if they want to go to Amazon, they can. If they want to go to Google, they can. If they want to go to Azure, they can. And we really invested in that and that experience. We're up on the Amazon marketplace. We have lots of customers running up on Amazon cloud as well as Google and Azure now. And then about two years ago, we went down and did this endeavor to completely re-architect our product so that we could separate compute and storage so that our customers could actually take advantage of the cloud economics as well. Um, that's been huge for us. Um, so you can scale independently. Cloud, cloud scale native. independently, cloud native, cloud native yeah. add compute, take away compute. Mm -hmm. And for our existing customers, they're loving the hybrid aspect. They love that they can still run on premise. They love that they can run up on a public cloud. They love that they can run in both places. So we will continue to invest a lot in that. And uh, it is really, really important. And frankly, I think cloud has helped Vertica a lot because being able to provision hardware quickly, being able to tie into these public clouds, into our customers' accounts, give them control, has been uh, has been great. Well, and we're going to continue on because that Because Vertica's an ISV. I mean, you're a software company. We're a software right? company. And I, know, I know you were part of HP for a while, and HP wanted to mash that in and run on its hardware, but software runs great in the cloud. I mean, to you, it's another hardware platform. It's another hardware platform. What, what do you care? Exactly. So give us the update on MicroFocus. MicroFocus acquired uh, uh, Vertica as part of the HPE software yeah. business. How many years ago now? Was two years ago? Less than two years ago, yeah. yeah. Okay, so how's that going? It's going give great. Us the update yeah, there. So, so first of all, I mean, it is great. HP and HP were wonderful to Vertica. But it's great being part of a software company. Mm -hmm. You know, MicroFocus is a software company. Right. And, and more than just a software company, it's a company that has a lot of experience bridging the old and the new. You know, leveraging all the investments you've made, but also thinking about cloud and all these other things that are coming down the pike. I think for Vertica, it's been really great because as you've seen, Vertica's gotten its identity back again. And that's something that MicroFocus is very good at. You can look at what MicroFocus did with SUSE, the Linux company, uh, which actually you know, now just recently spun out of MicroFocus, but letting organizations like Vertica that have this culture, have this product, have this passion, really focus on our market and our customers and doing the right thing by them, has been um, just really great for us and operating as a software company. Um, the other nice thing is that we do integrate with a lot of other products, some of which came from uh, the HPE side, some of which came from MicroFocus um, security products as an example. Right. Um, the other really nice thing is we've been doing this sort of in-source thing um, at MicroFocus where uh, we open up our source code to some of the other teams in MicroFocus and they've been contributing now in amazing ways to the product, in ways that we just never would be able to scale, but with 4,000 engineers strong in MicroFocus, we've got a much larger development organization that can actually contribute to the things that Vertica needs to do. And as we go into the cloud and as we do a lot more operational aspects, the experience that these teams have has been incredible. And security is another great example there. So overall, it's been great. Um, we've had four different owners of Vertica. You know, our job is to, to continue what we do on the innovation side and the culture. But so far, MicroFocus has been terrific. Well, I'd like to say, you're kind of getting that mojo back because you guys, as an independent company, were doing your own thing, and then you did for a while inside of HP. We did. You know, and, and then that obviously changed because they wanted more integration, but, and MicroFocus, they know what they're doing. They know how to do acquisitions. They're, it's they've a been very, very well-run yeah. company, the operationally. The Suse piece was really interesting, spinning that out, because now REL is part of IBM. Yeah. So now you've got, you know, Suse as the lone the independent. Lone independent. Yeah. 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 I do want to ask you, I go back to a technology question. Uh, aren't, is NoSQL the next Hadoop? I mean, are these databases, it seems to be that the hot fad now is NoSQL. It can do anything. Uh, are, are, are they, is the promise overblown? I, you know, I think, I mean, NoSQL has been out almost as long as Hadoop. And I, you know, we always say not only SQL, right? I, it, Mike start, said this from day right. one, best tool for the job. You know, you, nothing is going to do every job well. Um, 
So I think that there are, you know, whether it's key value stores or other types of NoSQL engines, document DBs, now you have some of these DBs that are running on different chips. I mean, there's graph, always, yeah. yeah, graph DBs. There's always going to be specialty things. Um, I think one of the things about our analytic platform is we can do like time series is a great example. Vertica is a great time series database. We can compete with specialized time series databases, but we also offer a lot of the other things that you can do with Vertica that you wouldn't be able to do in a database like that. So I always think there's going to be specialty products. I also think some of these can do um, a lot more workloads than you might think, but um, I, I don't see as much around the NoSQL movement is say I did a few years ago. Mm -hmm. But and so and and you mentioned the cloud before as kind of you positioned it I think as a tailwind, not to put words in your mouth, yeah, but yeah, it's a great tailwind. The Amazon, you're in the Amazon marketplace. Yep. I mean they have products that are competitive. They do. Right? They do. But so how are you differentiating there? I think the, the way we differentiate, whether it's you know Redshift from Amazon or BigQuery from Google or even what Azure DB does, is you know, first of all, Vertica I think from uh, feature functionality and performance standpoint is, is ahead, mm -hmm. um, number one. I think the second thing, and we hear this from a lot of customers, especially at the C-level, is they don't want to be locked into these full stacks of the clouds. Having the ability to take a product and run it across multiple clouds is a big thing um, because the stack lock-in now, the full stack lock-in of these clouds is scary. Um, it's really easy to develop in their ecosystems, but you get very locked into them. And I think a lot of people are concerned about that. So that works really well for Vertica. Um, but I think at the end of the day, it's just, it's the robustness of the product. We continue to innovate. When you look at separating um, compute and storage, believe it or not, a lot of these cloud native databases don't do that. Mm. And so we can actually leverage a lot of the cloud hardware better than the native cloud databases uh, do themselves. So, you know, we, but like I said, we have to keep going. Those guys aren't going to stop. And we actually have great relationships with those companies. We work really well with the clouds. They seem to care just as much about their cloud ecosystem as their own database products. And so I think that's going to continue as well. Well, Colin, congratulations on all the success. Yeah, thank it's you. awesome yeah. to see you again. Oh, really thank you. It's great. You I appreciate the invite. It's you. great to be here. All right. Keep it right there, everybody. Paul and I will be back with our next guest from MIT. You're watching theCUBE.